Hey, before we get started, let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's, hey, just hit it. Just punch that thing with your mouse or your finger or whatever you gotta do. Subscribe to this channel, help me out, watch the videos. Hey, maybe even click on an ad or two, help boost everything up for me. Thanks, let's get to the water pump. There's still something holding it in on this side. wonder if hitting it with a hammer will help. There we go. Alrighty, got the water pump and uh, as you saw, I got her tore apart pretty good. Lots of sparks and heat and all sorts of weird things going on there till I finally figured it out. Last one I had cut open was with a water jet, and uh, that was very expensive. It cost me <laughs> about a hundred or so dollars or more, and that was a cut rate deal. But anyway, I used that old uh, uh, cutter angle grinder to, with a cutoff wheel and got it off of there. But anyway, we got it cut open, and I wanted to explain in the dissection the damage that happened on a water pump with 330,000 miles on it. That's right, it finally bit the dust. So if anybody tells you a water pump can't make it to 330,000 miles, they're lying because I just did it. That's right, it finally happened and I was expecting it to happen. I'm not foolish enough to believe it'll run forever and ever, but it did make a good life. And what I did, I don't know, this is my second go around nearing 300 or over 300,000 miles on water pumps on a 3.5 Duratec. So I'm either blessed or I'm doing something right. And all I can tell you is fluids, 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 they are part of the game. So changing the coolant often, driving reasonable, and also using good synthetic marketed oils will also help. But taking care of those fluids and doing it over and over again is where you are at. Don't believe what Ford says for oil changes, coolants, and everything else. Uh, that's just a, 
in my opinion, that is uh, basically a menu for failure, and uh, you don't want to do that. But hey, we took the oil uh, or water pump off, and as you see it in this picture, you can see it was she's a little bit on an angle, and that's because all the bearings inside had failed. Coolant had managed to get into the shaft and destroy the bearings. And in that process, those bearings started grinding away. They started flipping and doing all sorts of weird stuff. And then, uh, of course, we ended up with problems. Now, I changed the oil in that pretty frequently. So, you know, everything was good there. But uh, we did the oil test. Remember, I went over the oil test. And I got the paper here just to remind me about it. But uh, we had a 75 or so parts, 79 parts per million uh, aluminum and we had an iron of about 93 parts per million now that would say oh my gosh you know we got problems those metal counts came from the water pump and I'm going to show you in detail why it came from there but you really need to do is when you get an oil uh, or water pump failure like this is understand that the actual water pump is made out of aluminum okay the bearings the bell housing for the uh, the the chain is made out of steel aluminum and steel and I'm going to show you what happened and why those counts are so high but if you want to know if that engine's any good you want to take and make sure you look at the chromium now the chromium on this engine was one part per million that's right what's on bearings yeah chromium imagine that also what's what's uh, bearings got is a sub layer that's right copper six parts per million on the oil test which was just slightly higher than its normal where but get this it was only half of the universal averages so the copper was in really good shape too uh, we had no lead and we had no tin so overall there was no damage to the bearings or to anything else that was on that engine as far as the needed stuff this metal came directly from the water pump and I'm going to show you why where we got the metal and uh, if you look at this picture I'm posting up right now you can see the metal that was gathered up on the oil pump itself check that out that's right this thing ground itself to death so let's go ahead start looking at this uh, water pump and I'll start explaining where all these metals came from and what actually happened to it now the first thing we're going to look at is the outside casing. Now if you look at it on the right hand side, it is quite a bit thinner. And if we look over on this side, right here, you can see where the water pump was worn thinner. That's right, the metal right here is a lot thinner than it is over here. That's because it was worn away. On the inside, if you look, you can see that it is all chewed up on the inside of the pump. The race where the bearings are, you can see little pieces of metal in there. This was all tore up on the inside. This water pump was tore up something fierce. You can see that wear right there. That whole area, it was worn. Now, on the insides, you can see where it is worn on that side. But the seal overall was in good shape. It wasn't leaking necessarily anywhere that we could really tell. It, it, one of, the, one of the, the seal failed at one point, but to ID exactly where it failed would be really hard to tell. But, uh, yeah, the bearings failed in the shaft. And that's really what caused the metal. So this is the aluminum. This accounts for the aluminum that we saw in the oil report. So that aluminum right there, that's right. 
79 parts per million or so. So, uh, yeah, there's the aluminum. Now, where did the steel come from? Well, that's pretty simple, too. Check these out. Look at that. This is the inside of this bell gear housing that the shaft sat on. And where the shaft was pressed on, it's smooth, it's good. But you can see the metal that was worn out on this on both sides. That's right, right there. You can see that. Now this was rubbing like so where it was mounted and it was at an angle like in that picture and it was rubbing against this. And that's where we got all of our wear because it was rubbing right in here and it fits perfect. I mean it doesn't move so it grooved itself right into that area and it's just sitting there grinding in there so it is seated on there well this is your steel therefore we have our iron of 93 so we got the metal and we found a bunch of metal all over right here on the on the water pump it was all over the place now more metal showed up now we look at this. Check that out. Look at that wear. And look at the shaft. Chewed up something fierce. Where that metal had been wearing out on that shaft. It's all ate up, folks. So now we have more of our iron. Because this is a hardened shaft. Okay, this is this is a hardened shaft running these bearings and you have your ball bearings in here right here that were going around this and then you also had your other bearings that were running around here now more metal where'd we get more metal at well we have our metal let me find the right here's some more aluminum and tin might even be some of the plastic that we're, uh, we weren't finding because this did not break None of that broke. I broke that. Then we have our spring that was on our gasket. Our gasket was still remarkably in good shape but wearing out. Okay, this gasket is different than the first gens with the spring and everything else in it. But this one is remarkably intact. The other ones I did, they were not intact. But you can tell based on my hands that this gasket was feeding into the silicon of the actual engine because it's a silicon gasket it was getting worn out the particulates were going into the oil so thus when we go down here and we look at our silicon look at the silicon so we have a higher silicon going on because of this this thing was getting worn and ground up in bits and pieces of it was going into the oil. Rest of it is the aluminum, the housing, and everything else that tore up. In the process, it was ate up, and some of it is because of me, but this here is all war. Okay, this is all worn out. This part right here that was pressed in on the shaft was all worn out. This wasn't me cutting it. This was it getting worn out. And uh, it was not having a good day either. So that can account for the silicon now. And let's check out some of the bearings. Now the gasket. You can see that the gasket isn't too terribly bad. I couldn't find any place that it was uh, essentially bad. Uh, but... You know, I cut it up myself, but I don't see anything that was really causing it. But again, this is a silicon gasket too, so who knows what that was doing. Now we have our ball bearings. Remarkably, the ball bearings, as you can see here, are not too terribly damaged. They're in pretty good shape. There's probably more of them. I don't know. That's what four that I found that when I took it apart. Now, let's look at these things. If you want to know where did the metal come from, 
check that out folks these things are supposed to be round oblong needle bearings essentially and if you look at them they are not round anymore they are ate up and that means that they spun around turn sideways in the shaft and this is where you're getting more of your metal also these were worn out and worn on that hardened you know shaft that these were spinning on they got worn out and they got deformed I mean you can tell how deformed these things are more steel more iron in the oil thus you have your uh, failure point being that that seal that I showed you was starting to fail along with the gasket leaking but the bearings had actually had coolant flush through and get into the bearings wash the oil out trying to get in because keep in mind the coolant is under pressure that's right the coolant is under pressure so from this side what's happening is is the coolant is forcing its way out to the lubricated side from the oil and it's washing the bearings out inside here once those bearings lose their lubrication they then start heating up and then they start uh, having metal wear and then they start doing all sorts of weird stuff and that's because they've lost their lubricant because the coolant is under pressure where the oil is not under pressure the oil pump has pressure but the actual oil is just bathing itself over top of this it is not under pressure on this side trying to force out otherwise you'd have oil in your coolant now you could get oil in your coolant if this shaft fails completely and then you keep driving it then eventually the oil will get in there it will mix with the coolant and then your coolant will become black because now you're starting to mix everything up in the coolant along with the oil and everything else you, especially if you keep filling up the coolant bottle even though you haven't done the work to replace this so that's how you end up with the water pump failure again that's your that's your iron that's your aluminum that accounts for it that Duratec was in excellent shape and on the oil test excellent enough shape to justify replacing it even at 330,000 miles and we just did a whole front end engine rebuild well folks I hope that sort of explains how the water pump failed that water is under pressure I forget what the PSI say 22 PSI and uh, under that heated pressure it's gonna force into the oil and uh, it's gonna wash out those bearings and then after that it's all over with as you saw in the bearings here uh, then that is a it, I mean we're talking miles it happens quick now can I say in gradual weeks if you don't drive a lot you might not see it right away but can you tell from oil testing and the idea is yes but most of you don't test your oil every oil change and in this case the oil wasn't due to be changed yet and it happened within uh, I want to say 20 miles okay so when they do go here's the key as soon as your engine starts running rough and you check the coolant and it's gone turn it off don't drive it you will save your engine by doing that one simple thing I don't care where you're at turn it off call for help get a tow truck do not drive it uh, that will save the engine that's exactly what happened to this engine it, 20 miles started running bad uh, she drove it to you know God bless her she drove it you know when it started running bad she continued on to work but it was only like 20 miles she got into work he checked it saw there's no coolant in it contacted me and I said that's it don't drive it she's done and uh, it wasn't driven I think he did drive it about maybe two blocks to his house and then shut it off but that was the point of it all that's how it ended so uh, yeah we had the code but we got a crankshaft pos position sensor code 
uh, it wasn't your standard uh, uh, P0016, 1718 type thing. Yeah, I forget what the code was exactly on it. But uh, we weren't getting cam phasers out of sequence or anything like that. This is a crankshaft uh, position sensor that it showed up at. But as soon as he said there was no water in it, I knew what the deal was, irregardless of what the sensor was saying. So it does affect a lot of different timing sequences in there when it goes. In this case, we couldn't turn this thing. So that engine was literally cranking over and grinding against that bearing in that water pump and it was just chewing itself to death uh, we couldn't hand turn it it was that tight so uh yeah i imagine if she drove it further it would have loosened up <laughs> yeah buddy keep on keep on trucking that way you get it nice and loose i mean once the bearings are gone she's gonna spin pretty simple but uh, as you can also tell, we did not break the impeller that's made out of plastic because it didn't make contact with anything because it wasn't wobbling that bad. It was pretty much locked into one angle uh, at that point, so we caught it in plenty of time. And that's really what it comes down to. But this water pump thing, check your water pumps, folks. If, you know, what can you do to prevent it? Uh, well, first of all, hard jackrabbit starts. That's right. Do you floor it at the, you know, at the stoplight, you know, when it turns green? Those stop signs. Do you run it hard? Uh, that all affects it. I mean, that's all tension on the chain and in the in the gear and everything else. I personally don't just slam the gas pedal down. I ease it up and then I just build up my RPM slowly and accelerate at a steady pace. Uh, I don't just slam the gas pedal down. Uh, it, it's all about driving habits and what you do. Uh, can you prevent it? No, you cannot keep it from happening. It's going to happen. When it happens is another question. For me, like I said, two of them over and at you know about 300,000 miles first gen and a 1.5 gen so i've i think i figured it out i got another 2011 that i'm working on right now changing the coolant and everything else it's my main drive now because i turned the 2019 over to my wife so therefore i am now again starting and i'm at about 137,000 miles I plan on this car running. It's all highway, and yes, highway makes a difference. But this car ran for 130,000 miles in city. That's right. It was all hard driving, and so was my other vehicles. You know, the one that failed at 330,000 miles was a rental car. That's right, a rental car. Who says they drive those decently? Who knows what oils they're putting in them? I didn't get it till it had 95,000 miles on it. So, yes, you can take care of them to the point that they last. Uh, my 2008 Ford Edge was also a rental. And it did the same number. Taking care of them and changing those fluids, folks. I am a broken record on that. But that's what you can do. So, you saw what happened. You saw the destruction that occurred, and now you've already seen the uh, test drive that I've just posted up of the uh, engine running perfectly. I mean, it's running just really good. I will be putting out uh, the actual front end engine rebuild video, and it will be in multiple parts because, quite frankly, I got over 100 gigabytes a video rebuilding this engine so it's going to be done in steps i'm going to try to find good break points when we're doing stuff but we did a lot to that engine and rebuilt the entire front end including water pump oil pump cam phasers timing chains everything was done okay so you will see a complete front end engine rebuild not just a water pump replacement and I think that's worth gold as far as that goes. So uh, if you're following me along with it, hey, that video's coming up. And I may also do a real quick and dirty one that just sort of touches on a couple of spots. And then, boom, the engine's running miraculously. Just sort of walking you through it and talking about it. 
but it'll be a 10 minute one which will actually serve you no purpose in actually putting the engine and taking it apart and putting it back together again but hopefully it's entertainment value at that point uh but hey my feet hit the floor today i'm having a great day i want you all to have a great day too band of one's got some great music mercy grills she's always got a couple one-liners and uh hey there might be some bonus footage of an eagle eating a squirrel after this. Well, maybe not. YouTube won't like that. I'll find something else different. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.